speaker like right below my microphone. <laughs> I mean, I got I got to turn this top back off. Yeah, the speaker is like nine inches away from the mic right now where I sit. I'm in a very small environment, not really set up. I'm working on some various things where I can do four or five, six different things at the same time. But yeah, that's the 781 right there. Um, just uh, the, any adjustments is nothing at all, however, you know, audible. And it's just visual right there on my, on my scope. Yes, and it's very clean. I'm not using much mic gain. I, I only turn the mic gain, or excuse me, the talk back down and the mic gain, you know, down about halfway. I'm not going to get into the voltages. But yeah, that's a 781 and what I call a triple X. It's a very, very similar version. I'm still working on it. Uh, this one, this will be my own personal. I, I got a couple videos. But anyways, I don't want to suck up too much airtime. Anyways, man, no. 131, yeah, it's a striker. It drastically modified. It's not a stock radio. To actually run this microphone right here, man. He's 131 Mustang radio, man. Appreciate that gate. Get yeah, yourself an awesome day. We'll be listening, man. But I just switched on over. I don't really have anything adjusted. Accordingly, it's probably going to be some hums. But there it is, man. If you could play back that recording right there, man, be highly appreciated. It's a 781. Pretty easy to get out there, punch up close. And in the distance. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna switch over to the uh, 781. It's probably going to have some rumbling to it because I need to make some adjustments for it before I switch back and forth. But hold on. Audacity, etc. I've done any of the DSPs. This is way back in courtside times, but I was listening to the buy the car type of thing. Well, I don't just go out and buy stuff, but I sell that stuff. There's still a lot of people that just want to use them, you know. And I deal more or less to the transportation industry than anything, but you know, it's something that gets out reliable, does punch through the noise, doesn't splatter and bleed, and has quality sound. You know, you're all, you're listening to something like that. It's only got so much, you can only do so much with it, but yet it works. I'm and I'm just using a cheap thirty dollar mic myself. I got the uh, the Heil in here, but I got to whip the boom around and plug it all in. But we're working on it with a foot switch. We're trying to build one that does them both. You know, the cheap stock mics, power mics, along with the uh, Heil. I got a 781, not the Pro 40, which. It's a toss-up, man, between the two. I'm sure you really noticed that. You play that recording about, uh, this radio is here on his chest. <laughs> it just cracks me up. But All right, this is an audio test. Ohio PR781 and a Lincoln 2 Plus. Plus, 654-321. Running out of a ZMX mixer. Hire a microphone, hire a microphone cable. Cable into the mixer, mixer into the higher cable, back into the radio. Lincoln 2 Plus radio, testing for audio clarity, fidelity. Tone base, requesting for P, for pop, 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 which we should not be popping. And we got milk crate, we got Sierra, we got Sam, we got cake. The snake ate the cake. Then went and drank the milk over at Mike's house. Audio test 10987-10910107654. Audio test 3, Stinkin' Lincoln 2, the Stinkin' Lincoln 2 1. This test of audio is now complete and done. Okay, there's the Cobra 200 with the Palomar SL41. Well, this is also doing double the power. No, never had an issue. Never had an issue with this damn thing. We talked on this for two days straight all weekend. That's all I had in. And uh, we had some long conversations on this Saturday and Sunday. Not once. Like I said, all jumpers were pulled. All jumpers were tested. They were put in a vise. I ripped on the goddamn PLs, tested with the ohms meter, put them back to each device with the analyzer. You know what I mean, as a jumper. I put the analyzer right to each right to each jumper, to the analyzer, to uh, like the SWR meter, test the SWR, shake it around, okay, that jumper's good, pull it out, test the next one, test the next one. Uh, even with the Ranger, I went direct to the LMR 400, tested the LMR 400, you know, we, we were going ape shit. Right, I tried everything. He's doing good. We didn't have TV though, but... Like I said, Gotta be something in the audio circuit that doesn't like this environment. That's that's all I can think of. Yeah, you know, he could have blocked 
John's great golf right there. Jason Then you realign all that bullshit, of course, but then you watch your scope, make sure you're not splashing our lock, so you can only expand so much. Dude. Round 6, you're 29 Street Egg. That's weird. If he's doing the same procedure as Mark, you should have to lose him on the other side of the bridge right there. I'll make my turn, we'll come up. What really got me is when the fucking thing went into the vehicle. And, uh,. It just it wouldn't stop. Again, don't forget. I found out I had that one pal of a microphone with that skinny cable that was fucking shit haired. Uh, I don't know. But then again, I put the SR198 on there too. That, that's a great mic. Yeah. I don't know, man. And I always make sure, you know, when you put the PL in the back, I always make sure the notches lock together. You know, basic stupid shit. I always make sure it's done right. Five spools on it with reduced. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't see how they draw these things. Yeah, because I told them the first night back it was Jiffy Pop. And the second night, once we really started banging it and getting into it, that's when Joe said, hey, you're squealing. And then uh, Billy up the road, up there, you know, uh, wild thing, he said, yeah, you're starting to squeal a little bit. So I started backing shit down. It went away. I would unkey, key back up. It would do it, bring shit back up. It'd be fine. And it was like a fucking game. And then I just said, okay, enough of this shit. And I pulled it. Yeah, hopefully it's goddamn cleared up for your next trip up, you know? They need to learn to work at night. Damn, Dave, that's a really good sounding right So that was done by Mike's radio repair? Yes, sir, Mr. Scott Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Have I talked to you before? Oh, sir. I finally got my way up here and I heard you come in on that mean and clean hard drive prepared machine. So Mike's radio repair worked. What kind of radio is that? I gotta get my SWRs down because I just switched this truck. But it's uh, Striker 655. I just turned the XO off. Mike's radio repair. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is at any tone, 6666. Yeah, I know, you're infamous videos. Yeah, I just happen to be on my way to work. God, yeah, I'm not on the radio too much. Ah, uh, 10 4? Yeah, I just heard your voice and thought I'd chime in. Yeah, before this radio went to Mike, it went to, uh, <laughs> Stickman. But, uh, before I guess he passed, quote unquote, uh, yeah. He had this radio before I had to give it to Mike. Oh, uh, okay. It's not the word up, it's like he's smoking a motor smoking a right here is a stock microphone. I had the Palomar SL41 on it before. Hey, it's still sounding good. I got fucking thing down. We got a car down here. It's spun out about a mile and a half in front of us here. It's bad. I got the guy said. Y'all need to watch out. That turbine-headed motherfucker in a white freight liner is going to kill everybody. Pack 
six over seven. I had a bear in the middle there looking at the eastbound. I'm on a white Volvo going by me like he's in a fucking race. Yeah, well, that's this motherfucker here. Just passing everybody in sight, going down the fucking hill, trailer fucking coming around him twice. I finally let him fucking go. I, I don't even want to be, I don't want to be, I mean, actually it would have been better off with him behind me, but anyway. And yeah, there he goes, there's his trailer fucking coming around him again. I mean, every time he touches him. Hey man, so you got a car spun around down there about a half a mile ahead of you, so watch it going down that hill. Yeah, that's the first time. Actually, this is the second time I heard one of Mike's radios. Oh, yeah, yeah. Once I get back to the BRs, it's down to be all right. Yeah. Yeah, there was a guy up here in this area that had had one of Mark's radios, and uh, he got a wild hair up his ass and got another radio, sent it to Mike, and... Uh, I used to hear him down this way with Mark's radio, but then when he got Mike's radio, I, I, I don't hear him anymore. Well, Smokey Bears have got to be checking up on that four-wheeler. Uh, ten four. Yeah, I had to send it to Mike because it's hard enough to get a hard, uh, hard enough to get a hold of the hard drive. So uh, I live in Germantown, so Mike's closer to me. Yeah, this guy's gonna lose it right here. Yeah, copy that. Yeah, Mark's Mark's kind of weird, you know. When, it's like, if you shoot him a message saying, how much does this cost, he's going to block you. If, if you tell him, shoot him a message saying, I got this antique radio, can you work on it for me, he'll block you. There's like all these weird things that he doesn't want to hear from people. And he's, all, he's just looking for an excuse to just block people. Yeah, I know how that is. Yeah, I just wanted to buy a... Uh, yeah, the guy just wants to be left alone. That's what I came out and told him, but I haven't heard anything back from him yet. So, uh, I needed to get this radio fixed, so I got... So we got all kind of red lights running westbound here by the... Yeah, one point three. If you shoot him a message saying, uh, I want to buy this, 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 and this, or whatever, and I don't care how much it costs, Please send me an invoice. He'll respond right away. So uh, I couldn't see over there. Uh, he got three and two. Uh, okay, you got to give him the money for Then he'll talk to you. That's about it. Hello, and they're probably headed to the 251.3. That's probably where they're going. Well, to a lot of people They wiped out. Hill, he spun out. And I could not see over the rock walls there, so I don't know, you know, what it was looking like over there. Yeah, 10 4, gotta go look at my paperwork. Damn, driver just blasted out of the pilot, ran a red light. Oh, that's no real big surprise. Well, don't give a shit, motherfucker. You go fuck yourself. Well, you should give a shit. Red light means fucking stop. I didn't, did I? You so sue me. How could you miss it? It's three big fucking lights. I don't give a fuck. You dumbass. Don't give a fuck. You should give a fuck. What happens if you fucking T-bone somebody, you dumb fuck? He's a bitch. Cow had to me. He's in a JB Hunt truck. What you motherfuckers are gonna do anything? You're gonna go running your mouth with the wrong person one of these days. Because he'd be Rambo. I ain't playing Rambo. You're more than welcome to come on up here. I'll go the other fucking way, you fucking douchebag. It's okay. It's a small world. Our pass will cross one day. Yeah, one thing you'll never see a radio technician do is a clean at close range video demonstrating. Um, but then again, there's, you know, the myth that radios don't sound good up close. Uh, most of them are all distorted up close. Where's that truck driving school? I didn't even know they had one back here. Yeah, it's all the way in the back there. It's Smith and Solomon. What's it called? Swift Driving School? Nah, it's called Smith and Solomon Truck Driving School. I thought it was Swift. Well, guess what? It's not. Try talking. Talk, talk, talk. Yeah, 
sounds crystal clear. SM on my end. That's not too bad from five feet away, ten feet away. Yeah, about that shit. So did you learn a valuable lesson from all of this? Going to three different radio technicians? Yeah, I'd say so. So if you had to recommend Roadstar Communications, what would you what what would you recommend? Well, I mean if you really wanted to take four hundred bucks and burn it, you can just throw it right in the garbage can. Well, what about what about Bob's audio? Well, I mean depends on the day, I guess. You know, he seems like he's a bad on Monday, good on Friday type guy, but you know, if you want quality and uh reliability no matter what, then he's not the guy. And who worked on that radio and tuned it this like this last time? That'd be a fine tuned C B shop. Yeah, some nice crystal clear studio quality audio you got going on. Hey Mark, you want me to jump in there and talk on it and then let you listen on this? It don't matter. I just thought it'd be interesting to, because you know how some some of these idiots are saying that they, they don't like my audio, but it's just my voice. You know what I mean? Well, they're just assholes to begin with. Well, you know, they don't like the way you sound, and just tell them to put a knuckle in it and give them a peanut. Radio sound fine. Drive it. Don't touch it. Does it sound the same coming through that receiver as it does coming through your receiver? Well, from this far away, it sounds exactly the same. Oh, good deal. I think your your RF game might be a little on the high side, but I can't quite tell. Yeah, I had it said it was uh, about three quarters away open. But no, it sounds good. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, if you want, it's the from the mic over, um, first one's volume is 12, second one over is the uh, RF gain, it's the outer knob. Try talking again. How's that now? Yeah, it sounds real good. Yeah, it sounds just the same as it does in here. So here we have an over the air line level recording at 10 feet away. Should be crystal clear with no distortion at close range over the airwaves. Yep, 100%. I see you got your fuel gauge working. Watch out for them wild lizards now. Yeah, I'll have to keep my eyes open. Oh, come on, you guys want the lot lizards. Don't light us. I wouldn't kick one out. I bet you, you like the big, the big fat ones, don't you? Yeah, they don't cost as much. You get more for your money. That's right. I like the ones that are about ready to die, because that means the second hour is free. That's pretty funny. Hey, Mark, if you ended up buying them like a lathe and a mill, you could set up a little machine shop where you can make those antennas. Yeah, well, with only having like, you know, 30 to 40 hours of free time a week, I don't know if I need to be doing all that. Yeah, it's true. There's so much work that goes into it. It's it's really, I mean, you'd have to charge a lot to, just to make it worthwhile. You start charging 100, you know, 100 bucks, 120 bucks for an antenna and nobody wants to buy them. And $120 really wouldn't cover your time and, and all the work that went into making it. It's very true. You'd have to sell, you know, 30 or 40 of them before you even made a profit. And plus stainless steel, it's really, it's real hard to, hard, a lot harder to machine than cheap aluminum. What I'll probably end up doing though is just, uh, I'll send my spare down to Chris and see if he could do anything, make copies of it, and make parts. I'd rather just pay him to do it, it'd be easier. I actually have individual parts, so I could actually give you a set of parts to send to him to replicate. That would work. That way you don't have to have them disassemble the perfectly good antenna. Yeah, that would work. You just send them down to them, have them make a dozen of each or whatever. Yeah, those NRO guys are going to get pissed when they hear that, that audio, how it sounds up close. I'm pretty sure they wake up in the morning pissed. Yeah, that Michael Houston guy, I told him, I said, why don't you do this? So make us a recording over the airwaves at close range so we can hear what your work sounds like. I don't think he, he, he's not too keen on the idea. No, none of them will do it because they're afraid to back.
back their shit up. Even the reputable guys don't want to do it. I don't understand that. Well, I used to work in a machine shop, and let me tell you, just the, just the tooling to be able to turn down stainless steel is expensive. Yes, it is. That's the best way to tell if you're getting your money's worth or not. You got that right. As we found out plenty of times in the past, you don't really know what your radio sounds like until you can hear it on the other end. Yeah, there's not too many people out there that know how to do their own radio checks. Like that Alan Ward guy, he, he's probably got somebody out in the distance, you know, I'm saying it sounds good, but his customers really have no idea what, what it sounds like because he won't show them. Oh, uh, we found out what they sound like. Yeah, I never even heard of the guy until I heard heard you on the radio that one time. And of course, he goes back to blaming, you know, his user error or whatever it may be. Yeah. Well, I bought a Comex down there in North Carolina. The guy swore up and down. It was a, uh, it been pinked and tuned. And he really screwed me on that. So I come to Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Got a hold of that guy. Got one, uh, same Connex that he had picked and tuned. And man, oh man, could I tell the difference. Oh, you had a radio done in Carlisle? Yeah, yeah uh, I had it uh, tra traveling in North Carolina is where I had it done first. But uh, the guy in Carlisle, it's, it's, that, that radio has never been picked or tuned. So he fixed it for me, and uh, I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Was it DTB Radio that did it? Uh, they just called him the CB man. He's right there uh, on, on Route 11 right there uh, at the Petro. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't get out. Everybody was hollering at me, turn up your mic game, and my mic game was all the way open. And, and as soon as he looked at my radio, he told me, your radio has not been picked and tuned. So next time I get down to trout, and I'm going to confront that fellow. They call him Jaguar Joe. But uh, he's supposed to have a good reputation, but he sure ripped me off. Sometimes a stock radio will outperform, uh, you know, one that's been peaked and tuned by someone that didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, this guy here, I had faith in him because he, uh, he works on ham radios, a lot of different kind of radios, and he's got a shop full of them, but uh, I, I should have knew it wasn't peaked and tuned whenever, uh, when he sold it to him, he just pulled it straight out of the box, but I just can't stand my line to me. He said, you know what, it cost me over $400. The radio industry is full of people that like to lie and steal your money. Yeah, but this, this, this guy, I actually, and Carlisle, I actually got faith in him. Well, it's even full of a lot of people that like to uh, think that they're doing a good job because they don't know any better because cause they've been doing it for 30 years. They think they're doing it right. Yeah, this guy's in it just for the money, I'm sure, but I did buy an antenna from him, and, and the CB man there in Carlisle uh, told me, he said, now, you've got a good antenna there. He said, that radio, he, he picked and tuned it for me, and man, it, it, it was the difference between black and white there. Hey, Mark, I got a hard drive on the phone. He wants to know how your radio's doing. Oh, wonderful. Tell him I didn't forget about him. I'll get that other one out to him this weekend. I just got tied up with all kinds of other bullshit over the weekend. This last one. Mark said he truly hopes that you enjoy your radio. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, Mark's kind of eager to hear this. I'm sure he'll like it. Mark said he did something totally different on this radio and something totally different on your radio, so he's eager to hear how it sounds at close range. I think he'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the NRO guys are going to get pissed off. Anyway, I'm going to head back to the house. I think we proved enough. Oh, shit. Whatever. Mark said thanks for participating in the demonstration. Do I get a trophy? Oh, I'll ask him. He said you have your trophy. <laughs> All right, that works. Your trophy is bolted up over your head of your windshield. Something that your trophy is something that Michael Houston is incapable of giving you. But according to him, no, he doesn't.
so much better work. Yeah, if you got you ain't gonna use that power strip, I'd like to borrow it. Anyway, I'm gonna head to the house. I think we did enough. Yeah, I'd say so. About time for me to go head to the shower. Alright, have fun. Yeah, we'll catch you later. Alright.